Assalamu alaikum. How are you doing, guys? Uh, today I will be showing you uh, the solution of uh, a question that we gave uh, last semester. Uh, that was for the second exam. And it's related to uh, shear. The question, and I took that from the test, it says for the beam shown, shear diagram is provided. Use FYT 280 megapascals, F prime C 35 megapascals, cover is 40 millimeters, it's normal weight concrete, columns are a half meter by half meter, and I want you to use the ACI 31819 code, which is the new code, answer the following. So the first thing is find or design vertical U phi 10 stirrups with spacing for part BC of the beam where reinforcement is a must, use equation B for VC, which is table 22.5.1, and I usually provide that with a sheet, it's more like a sheet sheet, so you will have that equation during the test. So when I'm saying part BC, I'm referring to this part right here, and I'm saying where it is a must. So all I want from you here is tell me what the spacing is. I do not want the location where it is. No, that's not what I'm asking for. The only thing that I'm asking for is design the reinforcement where it is a must. Okay, and I will get to that during the discussion. The second thing that I need is at section E, which is right here, of the beam is minimum shear reinforcement needed. So you have to tell me, do I need AV minimum or not? If I need it, why? And if I don't need it, why? And that's what explain your answer means. All right. Now, if we look at, if I have a look, at, uh, a closer look at the beam, if you've noticed that I'm giving you W ultimate, which is 100 kilonewton. Sorry, this should be per meter. Okay. They're also giving you two sections, section F. Section F is this cross section right here, which is giving me 600 millimeters of H. D is 540 millimeters, and I'm giving you 5, 525. And the width B is 350 millimeters. And this is going to be all the way constant up to section D. Now for section D, now instead of having 5, 520, I'm going to have 6, 520. And you also notice that this was top steel at this point, and this point the top steel became bottom steel, which is the 6, 520 right here. Again, I made sure that D is constant throughout. Now, section D also means it start at this point and go all the way to the end of, of the beam. Okay. Um, again, same D, uh, same H, same B, same everything. As far as section E goes, I only have top steel, which is 2, 5, 20. And section E starts from this point onward until this point. Okay? So, if you look at the shear diagram, you've noticed, again, and I've drew, drawn these at the center of the columns, right here, right here. This is 345. This is 255. And then we have constant shear for segment AB at 67.5 kilonewtons, all right? And this is uh, kilonewtons. So, first of all, I'm going to start with the part one of the question. I'm going to do my uh, design. And as you've noticed, if, uh, if you look at the shear diagram, I divided that up to three zones. I call that zone one, which is this one right here zone two which is this part right here and then zone three which is this part right here okay since he's asking me for the design of part bc again which was this was my b and this was my c so i'm going to be occupied with this shear diagram for now okay now to do the design as you know we first have to compute the ultimate and since V ultimate is usually computed D from the face of the column, all right? So now this will become my 345, which is this value right here, the beginning of the shear, minus 100, 
which is my w, the load, which is usually the slope of this line right there, times half of the column, since my load starts there, plus d. And when you compute that, it will give me 266 kilonewton. So now I have Vf. Okay. Now I need to compute rho w because he's asking me for phi vc equation b and that require me to, to know the reinforcement ratio w web uh, pro web all right now this is the area of phi phi 20 divided by b divided by d and it's giving me the value of 0 0.00831 then just put this plug that into the equation right here so 5vc will be equal to 0 0.75 this is my phi this is my 0 0.66 this is the cubic root of this times 1 lambda since normal weight concrete square root f prime c 35 times b times d and give me a value of 112.11 kilonewtons so now I have 5VC and now I have V ultimate. You notice that V ultimate is 5VC. So reinforcement here is a must. So now I can compute that. So VS is equal to V ultimate minus 5VC divided by phi. And it will give me the value of 205.2 kilonewtons. Now I have to compare this with the 0.6 square root F prime C b web fd since this value should never be more than that okay we said that would be the cap for how much steel can carry and then i want to compare this to 0.33 and that's for the spacing whether i should use d over 2 or d over 4 so you've noticed that this is less than the both of them so i can use d over 2 and i can use this as vs usually it's it's fine just calculate one if you calculate it this one then divide this in half if you calculated this one then just multiply that by two actually even if this value is less than this then i don't think you even need to calculate this one all right so now i'm going to uh, calculate the spacing sf and this is the area of two phi ten okay which is 157.08 times fy 280 times d divided by vs again since this is in kilonewton i have to convert that to newtons and then the answer would be 115.7 millimeters all right okay so this is the calculated one then i have to check the others and s is equal to 600 since it is less than 0.33 square root of prime c b or fd and d over 2 which is 270 millimeters then i have to calculate s1 max which is due to the av minimum and s2 max which is also due to av minimum and i've noticed that this value becomes 342.6 millimeters and this is 359.04 millimeters so out of these i will take the smallest which is 115.7 millimeter okay and this would be my spacing now here i'm calculating where this is going to happen now for the exam this was not required okay but since i'm going to do a full design i will do this so again for the exam this was not required for the exam you probably should have just stopped right here and telling me that s is equal to 11 uh, centimeters and that would be the final answer for zone one but in any event if i wanted to calculate it to calculate to know where it is most then this is 5vc which is supposed to be somewhere over here that would be equal to 345 this value minus 100 times x x is the unknown so this is about 2.4 meters so i'm going to use from this point up to 2.4 spacing of 11 centimeters so this is the answer thus use phi 10 at 11 up to 2.4 meters now again i would just like to emphasize for the exam part you didn't need 
to come up with this number because I did not ask for it. All right. But if I'm asking you for a full design, then you have to provide that to me. So this will end the part for zone one. And I'm going to do the same thing for zone two. The only thing that's going to change now is going to change the value of the shear. So the value of the shear here is 255. Again, face of the column. So now I'm going to start my design this way, uh, opposed to when we went that way from that face of the column. All right. So now this is 176 kilonewton. Uh, the reinforcement ratio, now this represents the 6 phi 20 divided by B times D, and I'm getting this reinforcement ratio. Plug that into this equation, and again, 0.75 is my phi, 0.66 is the constant. This is the cubic root of the reinforcement ratio. This is lambda. This is square root of F prime C. This is my B web, and this is my D, and I get 119.14 kilonewtons. So uh, then I'm calculating my Vs, and I call that Vs a D, meaning this part over here. And this is equal to V ultimate, 176, minus my 5 Vc divided by phi, and I'm getting 75.81. Obviously, it's less than those uh, two. Once you calculate uh, these for a beam, they, they, they wouldn't change. Okay, If you have a constant cross-section, they will not change for the whole uh, beams at all. If you have like multiple beams, well, then you only have to calculate it only one. So now I'm going to calculate the spacing. The spacing again here, I'm going to use the 2 phi 10 times Fy times 540, and this will be 313 millimeters. Now, these are the required, the minimum required. So I have 600 t over 2. This is from AV minimum, and this is from AV minimum. So the minimum out of those is actually the 270 millimeters. So I elected to choose 1 phi 10 at 25 up to 1.4 meters. Again, this is extra. It is not required. And this probably should end your answer at this point right here. And I'm again using the same equation to get that distance. Now here I'm going to go to part two of the question, which is zone three. Now V ultimate E, V ultimate here is constant, okay? Whether at D, at, this is a constant shear, so this value is constant. So now I have to check if I need or not. And like I said, for minimum or if not required, I have to check two equations. This equation plus equation C. So I'm going to calculate this one first and see if I need to calculate equation C or not. So in this case, I'm calculating this at the beginning, like I said, so this is 0.75 times 0 0.083 times 1 times square root of 35 times 350 B web times D, and I'm getting 69.6. So this is bigger than 67.5. So I might say, oh, I really don't need anything, but I still have to check with equation C. So for me to do that, I need to calculate the size factor, all right? And that's supposed to be square root of 2 divided by 1 plus 0 0.004 D, and that size factor is 0 0.8. Also, I need to calculate the reinforcement ratio, and this is my 2 phi 20, since I'm doing that at E. So this is the reinforcement ratio. So by calculating phi BC now, this is my 0 0.75. This is my constant. This is my lambda s square root of f uh, uh, cubic root, sorry, of the reinforcement ratio times lambda times square root of f prime c b up, and it's 66.1, which is less than 67.5. Thus, AV minimum is required at this cross section. AV minimum is needed. Okay, so just to tell you. A difference between that and the code of AC14. If you used AC14, ACI14, you do not technically you do not need any reinforcement in that area. But now with the new code, you do need AV minimum, and that's a significant change. Okay, so it went from needed or AV minimum needed to, excuse me, from AV minimum not needed to AV minimum. 
uh, need. All right. Now this section, this is extra. Okay, here if I was asking you to come up with a full design or full shape design, then you need to do this. Okay, and like I said, if a complete design is required, then I need to find first of all the location of zero shear from section F, and this is 3.45 meters because I'm gonna have to deal again with this zone one and this is zone two. Now I need to find the location of minimum required from section F. So I'm going to start this from here. And this is my 69.6. And this is equal to 345 minus 100 times X. So X is equal to almost 2.8 meters. Okay. So based on this, if I'm starting at F, again, start at F, then I'm going to use phi 10 at 11 centimeters from zero by zero I mean at F and we usually start at S over 2 up to 2.4 meters so I leave the zero divide that so I start at 6 centimeters and then start distributing my stirrups and I do that up to 2.4 meters then from 2.4 to 4.6 I'm using 1510 which is my minimum all right and then I'm using from 4.6 to 6 the required. And why is that 4.6? Because again, I'm starting at F. Now, when I calculated the required, the required was 1.4 this, the whole length from here to here is six meters so six minus 1.4 will give me 4.6 okay now why did i make a difference between the minimum and required because this was based on my s calculation okay and this is based on my minimum uh, which is av minimum and as you see i elected to use av minimum throughout so I do not need to check with the equation C to see if I'm required or if I, if I want to use stops or not. But again, you could ask the question, but don't you think it's too much to have stirrups at 11? And usually 11 becomes 10, by the way, up to 2.4 meters. And I agree with you. That's actually quite high or extensive, as I would call. So what I do in, at this point in time, I come up with another V ultimate. And I chose to do this at one and a half meter. So I go to one and a half, it's 345 minus 100 times one and a half, it's 195 kilonewtons. So now Vs at one and a half is equal to 110. Based on that, I'm calculating a new spacing and that spacing is about 20 millimeters. So now based on that, I'm gonna change my stirrup distribution. So I'm gonna use one phi at 11 well from zero again starting at s to s over two from the face of, of the column to one and a half and then from one and a half to 2.4 i'm going to use every 20 so, so i'm telling you use five stirrups per meter and then keep up with using 25 from 2.4 which is also saying i'm using four stirrups per meter so that sounds a little bit better than the design um, before now again for exam purposes i guess uh, if you give me a one five ten at 11 or 10 centimeters from zero to 2.4 i would accept that from you uh, you might ask me why did i use one and a half and not one meter for instance well i did check at one meter and it was not that much of a difference to be quite honest with you so i stuck with one and a half meters as well so hopefully that will clear up things for you if not feel free and, and email me and we can discuss that during our uh, net meeting on uh, thursday inshallah